Okay, we're continuing with the graphs. We're graphing. Trig functions and we're still looking at sine and cosine, right? Graphing trig functions. Sine and cosine. Okay. Now you're going to see the whole general form of the equation. And I'm going to write it twice, one for sine and one for cosine. So here's the, the equation. In general form. So a couple of these parts you're familiar with, and there's these new parts that are going to be introduced that you're not familiar with. But this is the whole thing here. Okay, and you're going to realize that you've only, been, you've only been seeing like half of it. Okay, so we have for sine here, right? We got y is equal to a sine. And now you're going to see these parentheses here. And that'll be bx plus c plus d. And it'll be the same for cosine, right? It'll be the same for cosine. Y is equal to A cosine parentheses BX plus C close parentheses. And then out here, there's going to be a number out here plus D. This is the general form. If you look at the book, they have the same thing. Um, they just use lowercase letters, A, B, C, D, right? And again, in the book, I believe it has X. In the worksheets that we're going to use, the only difference is it'll say Y is equal to A sine parentheses B. And in the worksheet, instead of X, you have theta because you're working with radians. But regardless, it's the same thing. You'll see X or theta, you treat it the same. You're going to worry about these A, B, C, D values anyways. Okay? Right, here's, here's what you got to be worried about. I, you're already familiar with A and B. You're already familiar with A and B. Here's the new ones, C and D. Okay, and the same thing for cosine. Y is equal to A, cosine parentheses, B, X, oh no, B theta. Theta, right? Instead of X, they'll have the theta, but it's still the same. Treat it the same plus C, and then plus D out here. This is the general form. There's, you know what these two are, these two parts. We're going to talk about what the C and the D are now. Okay, so you're familiar with A and B. And then now you're going to see what these, these other two variables here right these are all going to be constants they're going to be numbers but you're going to use them for something they're going to mean something on the graph okay um all right so let me just tell you now again you already know this one the a stands for amplitude that's your amplitude but remember the absolute value the b is not your period but we know that we use for b we know that to find the period is what? Is 2 pi over this B value, right? That's, that's what was used, utilized before and how we use that value of B, right? Um, same thing here. A is amplitude. And again, the same thing for B. That's for the period, right? Period is equal to 2 pi over whatever this B value is, right? Okay, now I'm going to introduce 
the C and the D, what that's all about, and how are you going to use that. So I'm going to write these again, right, because it's getting sloppy over here. All right. What are these new, what are you going to see with this parentheses, and what's new with the C and D values? Okay. Uh, let me write it again. Y is equal to A sine, you know what, I'll just do it for sine. It'll, it'll apply just the same for cosine. B theta plus C plus D. Now, these are the new ones. This new C value is going to help you get your phase shift. The phase shift. Now, I, I know you don't know what that is now. You're not going to worry about it now. That'll be the next lesson after, the next time we meet. But to find the phase shift, and I know you don't know what that means on the graph. I'm not worried about that right now. You just got to get the right, the right numbers here. To find the phase shift, there's a little formula that you have to use this C value. And the phase shift is negative, and then you got to get C, whatever this C value is, divided by B. That's how you get the phase shift. Okay? So here's C, here's B. You got to get this number or fraction divided by this number or fraction. That's how you find your phase shift. That's the new, the new parts that we're learning. You're just going to have to derive the phase shift. And the new one is, and then also this, this number that's just out here, plus something or minus something, this, this other D variable here, this constant, sorry. This is going to be your vertical shift. Now, phase shift means how much it's going, to li it's going to move. Your graph's going to move left and right. But we're just going to get the value right now. This number, this outlier, this number here that's being added or subtracted, not connected to this, this one out here is your vertical shift. Your vertical shift. That means it's going to tell you it's going to move the graph up and down. If it's positive 5, it moves up 5 units. If it's negative 3, whatever, brings the, it, it moves the graph down 3 units. So positive means up, negative means down. But for this phase shift, uh, you got to use this, this little formula. Just like you had to use kind of a little formula to find the period. It wasn't this number here. The same thing with phase shift. Okay, let's jump into these problems so you can see. All right, when you see them, they're going to look really intimidating. And you're just going to have to find the, right, for each graph. Find the amplitude. The period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. Amplitude, period, phase shift, vertical shift. We're already more than halfway done. You already know this. These aren't going to be too bad. Here it is. Again, they're going to look intimidating. Don't let them throw you off. Here's the first one. Y is equal to 2 cosine parentheses 3 pi plus pi over 3 plus 2. And when you have to make sure when you look at this, is you just got to put this and know which one's A, B, C, and D, right? Remember our general form. This is A cosine b theta plus c plus d. Everybody see how it fits the general form? a is 2, b is 3, c is that, d is that. Okay? We know a is 2, b is 3. Okay, so right away, what do I know? What can I get here? 
I can do over here on the side really easily what I'm already what I already know the amplitude the amplitude is what we already know that one it's two okay got that part the period remember for the period there's a little formula 2 pi over B which is gonna be 2 pi over what's my value of B here right here I got B is equal you know what I'm gonna write it B is equal to 3 here I'm gonna write C is equal to pi over 3 and D is equal to a positive 2 and A is equal to 2 I might as well write that make sure you're reading this reading these correctly okay so 2 pi over b b is 3 while well, 2 pi over 3 all well, my period is 2 pi over 3 okay that's not new here's the new stuff the phase shift now i'm going to go over here and do the phase shift find what the shift is here the phase shift Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abbreviate it. PS, phase shift is equal to, and there's a formula for the phase shift. What is it? Negative C over B. That's going to be what? Negative what? Something divided by something. And what's my C value? Pi over 3. Divided by what? Three. B is 3 and then you just got to remember how to do something divided by something else whether it's a whole number or a fraction once you see one of these fractions you got to do a little side work over here right side work and that's gonna be I know my answer is gonna be negative right phase shift is equal to negative it's going to be negative something. Now, how do I do this divided by this? Well, that's going to be the top, which is pi over 3 divided by, right? This is your divided by. Divided by 3, which is 3 over 1. You want to see a fraction divided by a fraction. Pi over 3 is already a fraction divided by, right? Here's your divided by sign. 3 is 3 over 1. And then that's going to be pi over 3 times 1 over 3. So that's going to give you what? pi over 3 times 3, 9. Okay, that's the phase shift, negative pi over 9. Just leave it. Later you'll learn how to graph that and do all that. Okay, just determine the phase shift. The phase shift is negative pi over 9. And then lastly, the vertical shift. The vertical shift is just this d value. Again, positive, vertical is, tells you the graph moving up or down. Positive is obviously moves up, negative obviously moves down. So if D is equal to 2, that means your vertical shift is if D is equal to 2, that's a positive 2. That means my vertical shift is, if it's positive 2, that means what? 2 units up, remember. Um, positive means you're moving it up negative means move, moving it down just think of it think of an elevator up two levels that's positive two if it's negative two it'd be down two levels okay all right i'll do the next two on the next video